Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. Welcome to a new video. And today we are blessed with our dear brother Edison who is going to share about his journey to Islam. So let him take away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, hi guys. Um, I'm Edison. Uh, this year 24 years old. And I have been a Christian for 11 years. Yeah. And basically my family background are all free thinker except my mom. She's uh, converted into a Christian also like me yeah that's part of my background okay so how do you come to Christianity okay uh, how I came upon or stumbled upon uh, Christian was uh, when I was primary 6 I was having my birthday celebration so I went up to a neighbor house where the Christian meet together to have a C CG or a DG disciple group so uh, back then I didn't think much, I just go up to interact. But they were having a feast and a pizza and they just take out the candle and put at the pizza. And then they start singing birthday song. And that's where I felt warmth. And they invited me, you know, uh, if I want to know Christian. Back then, my mind is like, I mean, sure, I'm a free thinker. I can open up to anything. So that's where I came to know about Christian. Yeah. So um, what was it about Christianity that you know, you didn't agree with that eventually got you questioning about it? I guess uh, for that, it takes me quite some time because I was really enjoying Christianity for many years. I enjoyed the worship, I enjoyed the teaching and a lot of things make sense. You know, like good things I'm talking about, like teaching how a person how to behave, how to love more, to love your enemy, to not judge and all kind of things. But eventually, there's things that is contradicting, such as the Trinity, which I never understand. So I wanted to explore more, so I seek my pastor help for information like that. But um, of course, uh, they give me an answer, but it wasn't as clear as I hoped to know. So I went to do some research and found out that most of the internet information was the same. <laughs> about Christianity whereby it's like Nescafe 3 in 1 everything packed into one packet so I really won't understand like so who do I seek you know at that moment I really do not know like do I seek God do I seek the Holy Spirit or do I seek Jesus yes Christian we understand that Holy Spirit is given to us you know to be in our heart so we pray so my question is still answering this who do we pray to you know are we praying to Jesus are we praying to God the Father or are we praying to the Holy Spirit and if they say it's one God, then how come I got three God to pray to? Yeah, that's my question uh, back then. Okay. So this theological understanding of Christianity, which got you uh, nowhere, you didn't understand it. Um, are there any other factors that, you know, got you asking more about religion? Uh, back then, not much because everything was almost the same. Um, love, all the good things I learned a lot to love and to care. So I don't really have more question regarding uh, the Trinity other than is Jesus. Why did Quran talk about Jesus being a prophet than a God? Yeah, that's one of my question. And I also have a question in my heart whereby like what my friend asked me, if Jesus was a God, then he must be a, I mean like a, immortal you know being a special being so how come was i mean he can die so that's where question come to pop into my heart yeah mm, that's quite an interesting take of you know if jesus was divine the understanding in the dictionary about divinity mm. means you can't die mm. and if god can't die uh, how come when he sacrificed himself on the cross, as the Christians believe, how can God die? Right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, what other theological questions you might have? Um, basically, back then when I watched the show Passion of the Christ, it, I mean, got one scene whereby Jesus was hanging on a cross. I mean, he, before he was hanging on the cross, he was being stripped to naked and then he was being weeped and blood and when he was on the cross, people put him with the spear on his rib. Then water come out. And I started to question, uh, like, you know, Jesus was born through Mother Mary. And, and then he was a god. 
so kept me thinking like really still back to the same question like if he is a god then why he would die for us i mean he could have all the power in the world to forgive us without anyone dying don't have to sacrifice anyone he have the power to just forgive so why jesus die i mean why god have to die for us i know he love us so much but he have the power to condemn us to judge us but and he have the power to forgive us so why is he there for us yeah yeah that's a very good question why does god need to sacrifice his son just to forgive our sins because i feel that you know when you apologize to your parents they would just forgive you and why do god make it a criteria and a barrier between you and forgiveness when he could just forgive you when you ask for for, ask for him to forgive you mm. yeah so that didn't also add up to me mm. when i was uh, previously a catholic mm. yeah the other point to add is that some people do say that jesus was miraculously born mm. therefore you know his miraculous birth itself is a sign that he is divine yes. what do you think of that um uh, i guess if god is divine he can do many things you know like just like how uh, hinduism think that god can transform into any uh thing you know to mix with his people um but still god is god <laughs> like he can just turn into a human being to connect with us but born to a virgin mary to speak to us is a bit doesn't make sense doesn't add up at all you know um that is why like i think it does make sense if he is a prophet you know it's like a messenger of god okay. yeah that's why i think yeah. okay in fact you know in the quran it says that you know the signs of looking at nature itself and everything around us indeed we can understand that god exists in this world yes. such as the rising of the sun how the earth is precisely rotating around the sun in such a manner that it doesn't get too close to place to burn how it is that our child is born mm. these are all signs given to us by god mm. and they are already miracles showing to mm. us right and in made in fact god also say that the similitude basically the similarity of creating jesus was like creating adam Yes. All he has to say be and it is. Yes, correct. Like there be light and there was light. Yes. That that Adam be created and Adam was created. Adam didn't have a father mm. or a mother. Yes. So would we call Adam a god? <laughs> no. Of course. It's quite a a, yes. a question there as well, yes. right? So at that point now I start to think miraculous birth is not a very definitive sign itself. Um okay. So you did not agree to theology. Yes, and one more reason yeah what's the reason okay so uh basically christian we learn about uh adam and eve sin you know sin against god because they eat a fruit from a tree of like good good and good and evil okay knowledge yeah something the tree of what what yeah so um basically they sin against god but eventually what doesn't make sense to me is that how come their sin passed down to us you know okay. so i was having a conversation with a uh, brother herod uh, regarding this in what he said was i mean he also said the same thing you know like doesn't make sense doesn't add up because in a way like if my father sin how can he sin be passed out to me if my father committed a murder like what you say uh i cannot be the one that bear the burden you know yeah. it doesn't make i mean, doesn't make sense so uh when we are newborn christian in a way we baptize and all we are taught that you are a sinner you are born a sinner so you need to repent then in my head it's like if i need to repent i need to repent forever <laughs> because like the sin will continue hold on to us okay and but christian taught us say that sin pull us down to hell which that makes sense because we did something bad but how can we do something bad if we never even do it you know that's my mm-hmm. question that's my theory like how can i be a sinner if i was just born even my sisters the husband the friends or ask me this question how can you be a sinner if you're just born a baby it doesn't make sense mm-hmm. and then i used to use it to say oh no lah if your baby you die then you go heaven still mm. then i'll be contradicting to myself lah <laughs> so like 
this is one of the question that got me thinking. Like, I think Christian mm-hmm. not very true. Really. Like Bible, like the theory a bit off here and there. Yeah. Fun fact, do babies go to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in Islam, yeah, we believe the babies go to heaven. Yes, because correct. we don't bear the sin of our ancestors or yes. our fathers. You know? Everyone is responsible for their actions. Yeah. Everyone is responsible to answer to God for all the sins that they've committed. Mm. That's what is fair. Yes. And God is, one of his attributes is the most fair and most just. Mm. Right? Mm. Okay, so theologically, there's so many areas where you disagree with. Yes. So at what point in time did you say that, you know, I don't want to be a Christian? I guess that uh, it's not say, like, the one more of like, whether you want to convert. So back then, uh, I met this girl who is a Muslim. She is my neighbor. Um, and I had crush on her for many years. <laughs> But uh, it wasn't the reason why I came to know um, Muslim. She, when I get together to know her more, I still see that, hey, she is really caring. Felt like someone who never knew me long, but uh, always there to care about me. And she don't judge me for who I am and still love me still. And then I start to remember, actually throughout my life, I have seen many, many Muslim friends of mine who I care about changes. They respect people's faith. They don't judge. They even are more faithful than I am as a Christian. They pray five times a day, which I don't. So eventually got me thinking that Muslim people are not bad. You know, they are not a bad people. Because initially, I think that <laughs> Muslims are about being terrorists. <laughs> yeah, so um, of course they are not. Um, it's how you put yourself in it. How you believe it. So, uh, so I learned a lot of things, uh, and I really enjoy that state whereby I would talk to Muslim people. They just talk to me like normal. They don't show it. Hey, you want to believe in Muslim, you know, or they surely jump into something related to real religion. But they just show love. They just show what the Quran taught them to be loving, caring, and to guide others. So that is where I started to think more. My girlfriend also encouraged me to know about Islam, which at first I was a bit hesitated. Like, I'm a Christian for 11 years and yes, we are girlfriend, boyfriend, but is it possible? You know, I was trying to find ways if I can don't convert, but still be with her, if, uh, but couldn't. So I learned to be, I mean, after some time, I start to actually realize, hey, actually Islamic is nice. So I asked her, you know, hey, maybe you can connect me with some people. So her friend uh, knew Adam Fu. So Adam Fu actually connected back to the friend, which the friend connected to my girlfriend and then passed to me. And then she, the I mean, my f- girlfriend, friend, asked her to reach out to uh, you, Herod. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so um, I didn't waste any time. La. I just went Instagram and search and all and then really alhamdulillah for you know for a quick reply you know i never thought that someone who is recording this uh to really help other muslim would reply me you know and then we managed to meet up and we got in touch and we have a chat and all that to clear the air to understand more and we have similarity so a lot of things uh come into place slowly by slowly so that's where it start to really give me like the how to say uh, confident to want to know more about Islam yeah okay. Alhamdulillah mashallah. so all our brothers and sisters are so beautiful <laughs> yes <laughs> right mm-hmm. I mean uh, and also okay um, where were we <laughs> one of me want to convert Oh yeah, continue. You sorry. <laughs> oh okay. Uh, so um, basically, what got me want to convert um uh, within the decision is because I believe this very strongly. Even as a Christian back then, everyone dies. You know, you never know when you will die. You can't guarantee when you die. Uh, you can say, oh no, I will live tomorrow. But in your bed, you die. And my one, well, my uncle passed in the bed, which no one knows. So in a way, if I don't accept the right God in my life, like Allah in my life, 
something happened to me, I would have wasted. So if I accepted him early, I could have learned more and I could have guided more people to the right path. Yeah, so, you know, just alhamdulillah for God, like, uh, and my girlfriend who are caring for me and the people around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so like uh, I told him earlier that, you know, these videos are done mainly because to help other people understand Islam so that our brothers and sisters who are Muslims, they are also going through a tough time when people don't understand mm-hmm. them. Um, and at least when this knowledge is out, you know, it's out there so that you get the right information. You can, if those who are interested about Islam can find out more through our convert center or to ask our uh, Ustad, you know, or even to ask us if we have the ability to answer some of the questions. So that the beauty of Islam is seen through us. At least you know that Islam is not just about terrorism and all that. Um, and there are extremism in every religion, in fact, right? So I, I'm so blessed and I'm really happy that, you know, we have Brother Edison who actually connected to me. And I'm actually quite a busy person. You know, I have a family to take care of. And sometimes I don't reply so quickly. But I do my best always to reply every message. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, this is the whole purpose of why I create all these videos. is actually to reach out to people who do understand more about Islam. Yes. And also to share the beauty of this faith with mm. you. Yeah. So to give you a bit of a context on what happened that night, just on the 18th of December, Brother Edison and I arranged a coffee session, basically at Starbucks. And we chatted, understand more about Islam. And we realized that we have a lot of things in common. And afterwards, Alhamdulillah, he also took his shahada. So I'm curious, you know, what was it that night that got you want to take your shahada on the spot? Okay, um, I just tell you guys something is that uh, during my ride with my girlfriend in the bus, I hear a, a prayer sound like a, like a mumbling, like someone is praying. I wasn't wearing any earpiece, nothing. I was in the bus, I hear it like, Someone is just uh, humming the prayer in my ear. I can hear it quite clear. So I asked my girlfriend if she's like playing songs about it or she can hear it. And she said no. So I was like, what? What is going on? You know? Mm-hmm. And um, after that, when I was talking to Brother Herod, I was actually thinking in my heart, when will I want to take? You know? Uh, this question got me thinking like, should I waste my time longer until like a few years later to accept to convert but then what got me want to say the shahada and willingly was I don't have a lot of time on earth I don't know when I will die that is one of the questions in my head if right now if I don't say it, then what happened if I die you know so everyone will die one day and it will be a bit too late, you know, if you delay, 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 you know, uh, and you never know anything happen to you the next moment. So I made that decision to take my shahada out of my free will because I know that it's something that will help me, you know, it's something that uh, is going to be a life changing. I felt peace upon it. Lah. Yeah. So back then when you asked me about if I want to say my shahada, it wasn't planned. You know, it was just sudden, but I was at my peaceful state whereby I made that decision to say. So everything was just really well and I felt excited, you know, I felt peace, I felt just joy in my heart. Yeah. So after that, the fun, I mean, the nicest part was after we had the prayer, I felt someone was grabbing onto my heart, like massaging. Yeah. Yeah, I never tell you. But it was, I felt like someone touched my heart. Wow. And then we wasn't sitting very close also. You know, uh, and I know that because I was looking at my thigh, you were quite far away, right? You didn't touch my thigh also, right? I felt someone touched my thigh. It like, like a hand just slew. So, I mean, it's something that, I mean, if people were skeptical, they would think that it's ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it just felt, normal it's like something just are are there to you know like take care of me you know like give me a warmth so it's something that i 
never experienced as a Christian before. Baptize is just throwing in the water and pull it up. But this was different. So really, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, so beautiful. Wow. Listening to you share this part about after you take the shahada reminded me also about the time when I took my shahada. Um, and yeah, I also felt a whole wave of peace and serenity. And like suddenly all your burdens and worries and troubles are gone. And God is like starting like a new life with you, for you, you know. In fact, you know, when you take your shahada, they say that you are starting a new life. Your sins of the past have been erased mm. and you are a newborn, like a newborn baby starting on this new journey of faith. Mm. Yeah, so beautiful, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I guess we have asked all, I, I think we'll come to near the end of this. Um, curious. So, because, you know, for the sake of also all our viewers out there who might want to experience your shahada, Okay, would you be open to take your shahada again? Okay, sure. Okay, so okay, so we are going to get our dear brother Edison to do his shahada again. In fact, he already booked his shahada with Darul Akam, the official one where you can uh, also get your conversion card in Singapore. You know, it's a necessity to do this so that you know, like you know, they do a hit count number of Muslims in Singapore and all that. This is part of the law. So, um, when is your shahada booked with Darul Akam? Uh, 30th oh. December oh. around 9.30 Wow, you even got to give you the time already Yeah, I mean based on the schedule <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so 30th of November uh, 30th of December the, well, nearing the end of the year of 2020 yeah. Alhamdulillah, we got a brother and I'm going to be your Muslim witness Yes Alhamdulillah, wow. so, so, so honoured for this <laughs> Yeah uh, and uh, okay, so um, we'll do one like a re- like so called like before the official day, but you know technically it's already the shahada one more time. <laughs> so let's try let's 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 do the shahada. Okay, since we are ready. Okay, okay. But before we begin, just want to be clear: you did this out of your own free will. Yes. Nobody right. is here to force you, and not our pressure of this video or anything else. That you're actually doing this out of your full heart sincerity. Definitely, definitely. Okay. <laughs> uh, if I'm being forced, I won't be here, guys. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. So we start by saying uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, you can. I already prepared for him to, you know, to say anything. Okay. So. I'll be looking at the side, guys. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Bismillahirrahim. Nah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. Bismillahirrah. No. Bismillahirrahim. Man, uh-huh. Nir Rahim. Nir Rahim. Okay. Bismillah. Rahman. Nir Rahim. In the, In name, the name of Allah, Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful. I, Edison Tan Wiget, have studied the fundamental of Islamic teaching and having been convinced of the truth, do hereby renounce my belief in Christianity and declare that I embrace Islam on my own free will. I believe and declare. Okay, you point your finger up. Uh, yeah, you can put it on the table if you need. It's easier for you. Okay. Yeah. Then, Ashadu Allah ilaha ilallah wa ashadu ana muhammad ras eh. Yeah, Rasulullah. I don't okay, have to pronounce Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadar. Muhammada. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Okay. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I also bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Furthermore, okay. right? Alhamdulillah. Oh, okay. okay. This point we said usually uh, takbir, takbir, Allahu Akbar. We say Allahu Akbar three times. Okay. Wow. I mean, for everyone who is witnessing this, we say this actually. Okay. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Okay. okay. Continue. So, I just got you. Okay. <laughs> Furthermore, I believe in the oneness of God. Allah, I believe in the angel of Allah, obedience, spiritual servants. I believe in the divine 
re- revelations, revelations, revelations. Sorry, <laughs> and all the scars, eh, all the scars, secret books. secret books. Okay, but, yeah, okay. okay, I'll help you here. Okay, I believe in the oneness of God, Allah. I believe in the angels of Allah, obedient spiritual servants. I believe in the divine revelation and all the sacred books, the Zabur, Torah, or Injil, of which the Quran is the final one. Okay? Easy. Okay, maybe you don't say Zabur, but you can say. You, uh, you pay if you or pay if you. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. I, I, okay, I believe in the oneness of God, that there is Allah. I believe in the oneness of God, which is Allah. I believe in the angels of Allah. Who are obedient, obedient spiritual servants. I believe in the angel of Allah, obedient spiritual servants. I believe in the divine revelation and all the sacred books. I believe in the divine revelation and all the sacred books. The Zabur. The Zabur. Torah. Torah. Injil. Injil. Of which the Quran. Of which the Quran. Is the final one. the final one. I believe in all the prophets and messengers of Allah. I believe in all the prophets and messengers of Allah. Of whom? Of whom? Muhammad. Muhammad is the last one. Is the last one. I believe in the day of resurrection and judgment. I believe in the day of resurrection and judgment. And I believe that the power of all action originates from Allah. And I believe that the power of all action originate from Allah. Okay, so this is our six articles of faith. Okay. Okay. So you, this is what Muslims believe as the call. Okay. Okay. And I will observe to the best of my abilities. And I will observe to the best of my abilities. The declaration of faith. The declaration of faith. Ashhadu alla. Ashhadu halla. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammada. Muhammada. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. The obligate or the obligatory prayer five times a day. The obligatory five time a prayer five times a day. The annual zakat and fitrah, which is uh, charity and donations to the poor. The annual zakat and fitrah, charity and donation to the poor. The obligatory daily fast during the whole month of Ramadan. The obligatory daily fast during the whole month of Ramadan. 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 <laughs> And the performance of pilgrimage to Mecca, if conditions permit me to do so. And the permission to... The performance. The performance of pilgrimage, pilgrimage. pilgrimage of to Mecca, if condition permits me to do so. Yeah. Okay. These are all... Okay. This is the five pillars of faith in Islam. And basically, um, these are all the reminders for a Muslim that okay. what is his obligations, what he believes in, you know? Mm. Um, actually... The official thing is just the Arabic words, which is Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That is just saying that I bear witness there's no other God but Allah, mm. and that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger of Allah. Mm. That is enough. Okay. That is actually the declaration of faith itself. The rest is just to remind us to know that as Muslims so we have to follow this like we believe in this and mm. what is our obligatory requirements that we do okay, okay? so now we are clear on this yeah. so welcome to Islam brother Assalamualaikum <laughs> warahmatullahi <laughs> <laughs> yes okay Alhamdulillah we have a brother here uh, brother Edison and inshallah you know even if you well, could do this okay <laughs> Okay, so if you, if you, I mean, you don't have to change your name at all, you know that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but of course, if you want to add a, a alias if you want, you can also do so. Yeah, like you So if you, you, you already have a name. No lah, I, oh. I said you are Fidaus <laughs> Yeah, Fidaus. <laughs> My alias is Fidaus. Uh, actually, the full Muslim name for me is Muhammad Fidaus Chia. Ah. Yeah. So, did the convert center also ask you about that name yet? Mm, currently, no, but I know that change name is not required. Yeah, so, not required. Right. Not so you can just put that your Muslim name is your same name. Mm. You know, you know, in the the paper you can just put oh, your Muslim yeah, yeah. name is Edison Tan. Oh, okay. Also can. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Uh, what else? <laughs> just <laughs> I guess uh, okay. If you guys have any other questions you want to ask, uh, 
um, brother Edison here drop it in the comment section below and yes I know I, I've been seeing you guys mentioning also about where you're from like Morocco Pakistan Canada and the US and I enjoy looking at that because I see so many fellow brothers and sisters in Islam sharing about where they're from and please do so in the comment section share about where you're from you know it excites me to know oh, so many people are around the world watching this video as well mm -hmm. and um, I thank you so much for uh, the time for watching this video I hope you benefited from this and uh, I'm going to say a prayer for you Oh, okay. Shall we say a prayer for our dear brother Edison now that he's just embraced Islam? I think it's more appropriate to do the al fatiha since, you know, <laughs> it's the first thing that he will have to learn if he uh, has to do his prayers, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so here he goes. Uh, it's called al fatiha the opening. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim Ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim Waladdallin Ameen and that basically means when we say Aumuz Billahi Minash Shaitan in Rajim, asking Dear Lord, save us and protect us from the Satan. And then we say Bismillah Rahman Rahim, the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. All praises be to Allah, the Lord and Cherisher of the worlds and sustainer of this world. Ar Rahman Rahim, the most merciful and the most gracious. Maliki Yawmiddin, Master of the Day of Judgment. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. To you alone we worship and to you alone we seek your help. Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqeem. Please lead us to the straight path, the path of goodness and the right path. Sirat al-ladhina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim waladdalin The path of those whom you who you, whom you favored, you bestow your favor upon and not of those who earn your wrath, your anger and mislead and dis, uh, misguide others. That's the translation of the Arabic words that we just recited. Okay. Yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, it's such an amazing feeling here. Um, hope you guys have a beautiful day and uh, I'd like to wish all my dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum Wa rahmatullahi Rahmatullahim Wa rahmatullahi Rah 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 <laughs> It's okay, it's okay It's okay I'll, I'll say English Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll write it down for you Wa barakatuh Wa barakatuh Yeah And that means uh, Peace be with you Okay, peace be with you Yeah, um Jazakallahu khairan and I wish everyone out there a beautiful day ahead and inshallah may we all meet you in Jannah paradise one day. Amin. Amin. Bye.